If you have employees, a personnel file is an important thing to have. It holds the employment records and other important information. So that all sounds pretty simple, right? Just get a folder, dump in everything that has anything to do with the employee, and call it a day. Well, not quite. Hi entrepreneurs, I'm Vicki Brown and you're in the right place if you want to engage your team, boost your business, and grow your leadership muscle. Why are personnel files more complicated than they seem? Well, first off, because you aren't the only person to see or use the personnel file. Your employee has a right to view the documents in their file and those records could also be subpoenaed in a legal proceeding. And on top of all that, the file can be audited by folks from state and local agencies to see if it complies with relevant laws. So, let's get right to the care and feeding of a personnel file. First, what goes in the darn thing? Well, actually, a personnel file isn't just one file. It's made up of a number of different files and records, each with their own purpose. There's the benefits file, the payroll file, the leave file, and the employment records file. Oh, and don't forget the authorization to work in the U.S. That's a completely separate file, but more on that later. So why so many files? Well, the concept of the personnel file is that if I get transferred from one department to another, my new manager could be given my personnel file for review, and it wouldn't divulge any information that might trigger possible discrimination, things like my age or ethnicity or my medical history. My new manager should only have access to the employment version of my name, rank, and serial number. So, hire date, salary, promotions, evaluations, etc. And that's it. That means anything related to benefits, like an enrollment application, claim disputes, and anything else related to my benefits coverage, has to be held in a separate file. In fact, even beyond that, any medical information that falls under the health information privacy laws, such as HIPAA, well, they're subject to special protection rules. All that to say that not only should you hold my medical file separate and not provide it to my new manager, it actually has to be physically segregated from the rest of my employment information. And by that, I mean filed in a separate cabinet with a different key. You see, HIPAA information is considered need to know, and an auditor doesn't think the whole HR department or all the company leadership has a need to know my protected medical info. So, if you do find yourself being audited, you'll have to explain who has access, what their job function is, and why they might have a need to know. And if all that doesn't convince you, how about this? The American with Disabilities Act specifically prohibits you from including medical information in my general employment file. Next up, the payroll file. This would hold things like copies of pay stubs, W-2s, and direct deposit forms because they have banking information. Time card records, tax withholding, and reimbursement documents would also be in the payroll file. And something like a wage garnishment actually has two pieces. One part goes with the payroll records, and the other, the part that notifies the employee, goes in the employment records file. The big positive with holding payroll records all together is that you don't have to dig through each person's record when you're researching a payroll question. You can file things under the payroll date and easily look at all the documents company-wide for that payroll period. The leave file houses anything and everything related to leaves, whether it's a leave for pregnancy or illness or workers' comp-related injury. And as you might guess, there could easily be doctor's notes in these records. And while you should always be very careful to only get the start and ending date of when the employee is unavailable for work, sometimes a doctor's office is going to give something like a diagnosis or a prognosis in the note. So for that, among other reasons, it's important to hold the leave file separate. So, with all that, what actually does go in the employment records file? Well, anything around job offers, promotions, demotions, transfers, salary and other compensation, training, policy acknowledgments, signed agreements such as confidentiality or inventions agreements, performance documents like warnings and other disciplinary notices, evaluations, job descriptions, and new hire documents, as long as they don't contain any of the protected information that we talked about earlier.
And of course, anything related to litigation or workplace investigation, well, that would be held in an even more top secret separate file. But if that were to happen, your legal counsel would be involved and they would give you all sorts of guidance on how to maintain information related to the case. And a quick word about interview documents, such as interview notes, test results, etc. These should be held with the job recruiting file versus making them part of the personnel file. Often there may be notes or information the company would prefer to keep confidential in those materials. So we suggest you not store them in the personnel file. Oh, and one more thing I told you we would cover later. That's the authorization to work in the U.S., commonly called the I-9 form. Now, this form is a big deal because it has a whole host of confidential information, birth date, immigration status, possibly ethnicity. In fact, I-9 forms are so special that you're required to keep them all together and separate from the employee records. I'll tell you a secret. The very first thing an auditor does when they come in to look at personnel files is look for I-9s in the personnel files because they know there's a very good chance that's where they are. And it's an automatic fine. So right now, pause this episode, go to your personnel records and pull out every single I-9 form and put them in a separate folder or file. I'll wait. No, really, I'm telling you, it's that important. I'll wait. Okay, I assume you just did that and now you're back. Good job, by the way. I get this question all the time. Do I have to show the employee their file if they ask? Well, it depends. There isn't a federal nationwide law about employees getting their personnel file, but most states have passed laws that grant employees the right to view or copy some or all of their records. So the short answer is double check with your state guidelines, but probably. For instance, in California, current and former employees have the right to inspect and receive a copy of their personnel files and any records that relate to their performance or any grievances. Now, if you keep your files electronically versus physically, these separation guidelines are still going to hold. So make sure you break everything out and limit access to various pieces of the information. Oh, and one final point. Do not just throw random notes in the personnel file. As I mentioned before, everything in the file can and usually does become part of any legal proceeding that's happening. You know, I've seen all sorts of things in the file. Notes from the manager that say, well, Vicki called in sick again today, but you know, I don't believe her. What can I say? That is not good. And don't think that just because you have the formal personnel file, but you're also squirreling away information in a separate folder under my name, that you can keep the squirreled information out of the lawyer's hands, because you can't. When they ask for records, they ask for all related documents, so you're required to cough up everything. Believe me, that kind of thing can get you in a world of hurt, and it doesn't have to happen. Just don't put things in the file you wouldn't want on Google's front page. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe and share. And remember, your inspired leadership is the secret sauce to having a high performance team and a wildly successful business you'll love. I'll see you next time on Leader's Journey.